This allows energy to be produced from water and air. For Victor Schauberger, conventional explosion technology was the technology of death. With his home power plant, he hoped to stimulate atomic conversion processes through implosion, fulfilling the dream of a non-polluting energy converter that is economical with natural resources. Water jets of enormous force develop in the spiral pipes. But on the very first test run, the pipes burst. A second prototype was drawn up by Victor's collaborator Scherio and built later in Canada. Now this suction turbine has been brought to Germany for closer investigation. July 2007. At a convention of the Association for Implosion Research, Jörg Schauberger and Klaus Rauber unwrap a long lost piece of equipment. It is the last repulsin that Victor Schauberger ever built. In 1958, it was lost in America. The repulsin was constructed at the time of the miracle weapons of the Third Reich and became a legend after the war. One specimen allegedly took off from the workbench and shattered on the ceiling. But what really was the repulsin? According to a technical drawing of the prototype from 1940, the repulsin could, among other things, silently power an aeroplane without the need for fuel. In the turbine there are two wavy plates, one on top of the other. Air was drawn in through the gill slits between the two plates. And then the air is sucked in here through the slots and brought into the diaphragm inside. So that the air flows round here in a circle. Here the air escapes between the discs and is rotated with these earlobe-shaped guide vanes. Schauberger's central approach here was the principle of matter transformation. The elements of the air, particulate matter and gases are converted in this repulsator. One part escapes through the ring rotator. And the radiation energy, Schauberger talks about synthesis electricity, is emitted through the central axis. The repulsin creates a biological vacuum along the axis in front of it, into which the aeroplane is sucked. Like the trout that's basically sucked through a vortex. I could see that its uh, function was to generate some kind of vortex airflow. And so what we wanted to do is look to see if uh, when it was spun at high speeds, <coughs> whether it would generate any, any lift. We only had pictures of the device uh, before we received it. And there were at least two parts of the device that uh, were not provided us. One of the parts we had pictures of, photos of, and so we were able to fabricate that uh, part of the device to add to what was sent to us. And then there was another smaller camp that we had no information on its structure. It wouldn't look like it would pay, play a major role, but you know we can't be sure. So when we didn't see a good effect, we didn't know if perhaps uh, we were still missing a significant part. Victor Schauberger had said that the catalysts in particular were essential for his machine to move in a way that corresponds to nature, and these were missing. We should have been able to obtain energy without wasting resources, with machines that run on only water and air. In the end, my grandfather signed a contract in which he transferred the rights to all his ideas, all his patents and thoughts to an American consortium, just so that he could fly back home again. And, as you know, five days later, after he was back home, he died. In the 30s or even later, if people had listened to Viktor Schauberger, we would have been spared all the disasters we have today, and which we're expecting to have. It cannot be different. Nobody could see the problems of life so comprehensively as he did. We cannot live without a living nature. That is quite clear.
Victor Schauberger saw a cause of declining yields in agricultural machinery made of iron. Basically, Victor considered the formation of rust in the water or the soil to be a life-destroying process. For this reason, he turned to the noble metal copper. Victor and his son Walter Schauberger obtained many patents for agricultural implements made out of copper. Instead of rust from the iron, copper and copper alloys contain trace elements which are brought directly into the soil through abrasion. Susanna Niedermeyer has been using copper tools in her garden for several years. On a small scale, she observed similar results to those documented in the 1940s in large-scale field trials in the Salzburg region and the Tyrol. An increase in soil fertility. Well, with the copper spade, I have to say, it just goes into the ground more easily. With copper tools, it seems that the trace elements also get into the soil. It seems to me that the soil in the whole garden has become homogeneous. Victor Schauberger developed a special plough for loosening the soil which turned the soil inwards, centripetally, rather than outwards, centrifugally. Unfortunately, there is only one model of the spiral plough, also known as the bio-plough. Klaus Rauber of the Association for Implosion Research in the Schwarzwald explains how it works. With his bio plow, Victor Schauberger copied the way of a mole, faithful to his principle, comprehend and copy nature. This plow works like a mole, which moves the soil centripetally and so moves through it with hardly any resistance. Electron microscope photographs have recently shown that shark skin has a similar structure, enabling the shark to plow its way through the water with hardly any frictional resistance. Victor Schauberger certainly had not seen such pictures in his time. This plough turns the soil twice, first by turning it at this edge and then turning it back again so that the layering of the earth remains intact. The merits or demerits of ploughing in agriculture is ever more frequently debated. Victor Schauberger's backwards turning plough could be the way to leave microorganisms in the soil layer where they belong. Victor and Walter Schauberger's insights should be seen as an invitation to be inspired. So the point isn't to stick to the literal meaning, but develop one's own ideas and thoughts for a future with and not against nature. Maybe we can add a third C to my grandfather's C and C motto. Comprehend, copy and cooperate with nature.